Hi, thank you for joining me. This is Holly from The Morning Pour. In this pour, I am doing a St. Patrick's Day coloring themed inspired painting, a straight pour. And I'm actually getting ready to join with several artists tomorrow on St. Patrick's Day. That's right, tomorrow, the 17th of March, 2021. Of course, if you're seeing this after that day, you can always catch the replay of all the videos and all the artists who are going to be involved. I'm going to be putting their channel names and links to their channels in the description below so that you can find everyone easily but of course for anyone who gets the heads up about the collaboration before it actually takes place it would be so awesome to have you there so in this painting you can see i am layering the cup getting ready to do a straight pour and as you are watching me later, I just want to go ahead and give my great thanks to Cynthia Porter from Cynthia Porter Studio because she's the mastermind behind this collaboration. She's the one that's put the whole thing together. And I also want to give a shout out to Donna. Uh, she has the channel called It's Art by Donna M. And Donna is actually the person that I found out about this from and who I found out about Cynthia from. Donna has been amazing. She's been doing all sorts of videos lately, all in the St. Patrick's Day theme, sharing about the collaboration. And she's really been an amazing powerhouse of getting the word out. And she's so wonderful. If you have not checked out her channel or Cynthia's channel or any of the artists that are in this collaboration, please give them a check. I'm sure you will love what they've done. Everyone in this group has such great hearts and are so embracing. They love this art, they love the community, and they're really just out to have fun and to help one another, to help inspire other artists, and to help other artists grow. And I really love that when people are that way. I feel that they are the most inspiring types of people. So I will always support them because of how wonderful they've been. They've been completely embracing of me. I probably have the newest channel out of everyone in the group and still they have welcomed me with open arms and I will always be grateful for that and value them as friends and as um, peers in this wonderful art community. So here you can see I'm really happy with the way that this came out on the canvas. At this point, I'm already a little concerned with the amount of paint that's on there, or should I say the amount that is not on there. I initially kind of thought this might not be enough. I wondered if I should either pour some around it and maybe do a little bit of a wreck between the two parts to kind of help join them. I did not want to pour in the center because I really, really liked that center. I decided to just go for it. My fingers were crossed. My heart was thumping. As you can see, I'm, I'm tilting very carefully, very slowly, doing my best to keep the integrity of that incredible, incredible detail that's in the center there. It's absolutely stunning. And you might be wondering, why did I choose to put sky blue in that bluish green tealy color in my St. Patrick's Day inspired pour? Well, I have a couple theories behind that. One is mainly the overall appearance that I was conceptualizing. Now, to be honest, that little bit of bright blue right in the center was not exactly in alignment with what my overall vision was. I had planned and of course crossed my fingers a little because we can only control the paint so much in acrylic pouring, but I had idealized that these two blues would kind of come across more like undertone accents so that they wouldn't necessarily be obviously uh, visible as blues, but that they would add to the, I guess, depth and the richness of the overall appearance of the greens. So yes, that one blue bit right in the middle right there was, was a little bit out of bounds for that. However, I was still really liking how this was going. Not only this, but shamrocks and clovers, they actually prefer to be in the sun, I think. 
I believe that that's the case. Now, I researched them at one point, and perhaps I should have checked this again before pr putting this video together, and I didn't. But I believe that they really like to be in the sun, and so obviously when we're in the sun, we have beautiful bright blue skies. So this was another one of my theories, was that if the lighter blue did turn out a little a little more obvious than what I planned, that my theory would still be that this field of clovers or shamrocks was under the bright blue sky. Okay, now look at this. From my angle, I don't realize that there's actually a heart shape in there. Is that beautiful or what? But I can't move this paint anymore. And all I can see from my angle is that I'm losing contrast. The more that this paint is stretching out, the colors are fading and I'm losing the richness. And I start to kind of panic a little, although not nearly as much as when I first started acrylic pouring. I used to panic a lot more in the beginning. I've gotten a lot calmer. But at this point, I was really upset with myself for not just adding more paint. I didn't realize that there was actually a heart in the painting because I was on the other side of it. I wasn't seeing it from the angle that the camera shows. The, the camera shows the opposite side. If I would have seen that, I think I would have tried to pour around that and keep that. I couldn't have planned for that and then tried to create it. Is that spectacular? Because it doesn't look concocted and it doesn't have like a corny type of appearance if I would have tried to concoct that. Oh, I'm, I am a little crushed, to be honest, that I didn't see that. I didn't recognize it from that other side. But that said, I do really like what ends up happening next. So I am obviously getting ready to pour on top of this to help expand this out and to make this work. I do end up liking the final result, but I don't have a heart in the end. I, I am very sad about this, especially my dad's favorite color was green. I found this out one day when I was young. I asked him one day, what's your favorite color, dad? I might have said daddy. I might have still called him daddy at the time. I don't recall. And he just looked at me and he just said in one word, green. And he kind of elongated it like that, although I can't duplicate exactly the way that he would speak. And so, yes, when I, when I work with large amounts of green, or if I wear green clothing in particular, which I don't often wear because it doesn't really look that great on my skin tone, but I often think about him when I do. And if I would have seen this heart with all this green and St. Patrick's Day, man, this just would have been my heart for my dad. But I didn't see it. <sighs> well, I guess I have it on film, right? I have it on film as a memory, and you all can enjoy it too. Let me know if that story touches your heart in the comments below, and give it a thumbs up if you are still here. Obviously, you like it enough to still be here, and perhaps consider subscribing, and definitely consider coming back to see the collaboration tomorrow. And it's my understanding, if I have this right, and I hope I am speaking in correctness, and please forgive if I have any of this incorrect at all, but it's my understanding that the viewers of the artists within this collaboration, if viewers will comment underneath every single artist's videos that are in the collaboration, that they will be eligible for a drawing for a prize that Cynthia has put together. So she not only has put together this collaboration and is also the one that is going to have to sift through every video in this collaboration and all the comments to find where all the people match across the board with being underneath every single video. That's probably going to take quite some time and she's taking that on. But if I've understood this correctly, I believe that there is a drawing for a prize for the viewers. So that is really amazing. And I really cannot thank her enough for conceptualizing this whole thing, for being willing to do it, for being in such a spirit of fun about it, and for just being so embracing. None of the people in this group 
are outcasting any other artist because of not being a big enough channel and everyone just wants to have fun and just come together and enjoy their art and I really appreciate that. I hope that you will too. I hope you'll appreciate the spirit from which these people are coming because that's what this world really needs is people like this. You know, people that are embracing, people that are inspiring, people that are uplifting, that want to just have fun together and help one another and just uplift each other in that way. And that's what these people are doing. And so they will always have my support. I feel so included and befriended by them. And, and I really value that. I really, really do. I will always cherish that. They will always be my friends now. And I could not be happier. I honestly could not be happier that I chose to start this channel so recently. I mean, not that I chose to start it so recently, but that I started it because now I have these friends and I would not have had them if I had not started my channel. And of course, within that, it's going to be so much fun to be part of the collaboration. So you can just see I'm really taking my time with tilting and sometimes on my videos I will speed up my tilting just so that you don't have to watch it in real time. I tend to like to keep my videos a little bit shorter. I also figure that if someone has some acrylic pouring experience they probably are getting a feel for the the carefulness and the slowness with which you sometimes really do need to tilt but I also know within that that not everybody realizes that yet and you'll only understand by a combination of seeing it take place and then feeling it as you do it for your, yourself it's um it's different watching it than seeing it I, excuse me it's different seeing it being done than doing it and feeling what it feels like but a combination of both greatly reduces the amount of time it'll take a new artist to get good at it So in this video, I actually left this speed real time and you can really see how slow I'm taking the time, letting it rest at points, letting for cells to develop, for just the interactivity of the paint to develop at times. really do love all the shapes and the lines and there is a bit of cell action going on there. So in this paint um, pour, my white is created from Artist Loft Flow White, but rather than using DecoArt Satin Enamels, I've actually used Bare Interior Satin Enamels. It's a paint and primer in one. And I actually have gotten such good results with this paint that I'm probably going to get it from this point forward. I've not even been able to obtain satin enamels in white in the last two months. It's just not findable. And if it, if it does become available, it's for such a short time that it's just gone. So my experience has been that when I've been looking for it, I don't find it. But now that I've experienced the bare satin enamel, and it's really a lot less money per ounce than the DecoArt satin enamels. And now, granted, I did use a higher percentage of the bare than what I was doing with the DecoArt satin enamels. I was following more of um, Sarah Mack's recipe, and she only uses a couple of tablespoons of that for quite a decent amount of paint mixture of the Artist Flow White and the Flow Troll. And I was doing that and I was liking the results, but again, that was changing for me. And that might've just been changing with the seasons and the humidity levels in my home. And I really suspect that that's the case. But since getting the bear, it is actually quite a bit cheaper if you think about how large the can is for the price that it is compared with the small eight ounce container of Satin Enamels by DecoArt that I put a higher ratio. I followed some other artists' recipes where they use a higher ratio. 
and I'm loving the results, so I probably will continue to get the bear. Besides, I have a Home Depot right around the corner from me. I don't even have to wait for it to come. I can just hop over there and just pick it up. Because there are no stores around here that carry the Satin Enamels Deco Art, so I always have to order that, but I haven't been able to find anyone who's got it in stock to order it from. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you in case you've wondered about it. I am really liking the results, and you'll see some paintings from me coming up in the times ahead where I've been using it because I've got uh, I've done quite a number at this point and and I will have those being shown here soon so you will definitely be seeing more results with the bare satin enamel I'm going to be experimenting with some other paints too I actually have gotten two satin enamels by bear and there's another one that I'm going to also get and I'm gonna experiment with all of them and see if they make any difference I will let you know. So as always, I have close-ups coming up soon and I will have the displayed results coming up in just a few moments. So I always love to, to look at other artists' close-up results and I know that you probably love seeing that too and I really love the displayed results. So. I will definitely have that after. Here I'm just, you know, fine-tuning this painting. I know when I was really trying to work out my my skill levels within this art genre, I really learned a lot by watching Sarah Mack in particular. At that time, I, I, I later learned a lot from others as well, like Rinska Dauna. But the first person I came across that really was making an impact for me um, was Sarah Mack, and I really learned a lot just watching her touch up paintings and some other things too. I'm going to actually share in another video the main things I learned from Sarah Mack. She doesn't speak them that I've ever heard, but I caught on to them, and they really changed my paintings for me, and, um, and, I, and I actually credit her for why I'm still acrylic pour painting today, because I almost gave it up right before I found her channel. So here we go with these close-up results. I don't have a heart, but I definitely have fields of shamrocks and some gold running through there, and so I think it's very interesting. I think it's an interesting pour. It's a bit unusual, and I, I really like it for its uniqueness and for the qualities that are there within it. There's a lot of overlayering of the colors, and I really love it when that happens. I know a lot of people credit the mix medium, like the actual mix pouring medium called mix, for doing that, and um, and it does. I will be showing some paintings coming up ahead where I have used mix, but I really get that overlayering quite a lot with Floetrol as well. If you've experienced both, let me know in the comments below what you think. All right, so here comes the displayed results.